I, I, a lead is a lead is a lead to me. I mean, I, I just dog them until they're, they're gone. Till I know it's, it's not going to happen. So, so everybody you've met with is on some kind of a touch campaign. Yes. Mm -hmm. indefinitely and most effectively is is it still just dropping them a call and uh, what are you using sly broadcast or are you doing direct are you sitting down once a week and just dropping a personal message I usually do sly dial and leave a message but then I also send an email to them excellent excellent I do both I do both is there um, any kind of uh, maturation process that you've seen at all from the lead to listing like from the first time you meet them do you have an average for where they're ready to actually take an action well I really drive home the I first of all if they're if they're thinking of listing their house I always tell them two months before the foreclosure date is when they need to pull the trigger um, and the same thing with a loan modification application. I tell them, if you know you don't have a plan at a minimum of two months, you know, then you're you're going to struggle and you're going to creep forward to a foreclosure date and completely exhaust your options to do anything. And I guess finally, it's this: um, even for those that aren't extremely confident at the front door, uh, I still assert this about the monster. Is the monster at the end of the day, even if you're not confident, can you just do it on the numbers game of just encountering enough people to get the listing from your perspective? Yes. And I, I, I just, for those of the people that are listening that have not gotten out there and started this whole program yet, um, I, I didn't know what the heck I was doing when I first started. and But what I did is I just threw myself out there with some blind faith and just started tagging and showing up at appointments and I really was not good at it in the beginning I let things shut me down like oh I've got I've already applied for my loan mod or um, I'm gonna reinstate my loan um, you know and or you know they say my friend is is gonna list the house for a short sale those are things that used to shut me down right in the beginning. I said, okay, well, great. I'm glad you got a plan. I got you, I'm glad you got it handled. Here's my information. If you need any, any additional information, I'm here to help you as an advocate. And I'd walk away. But there were missed cues in there that I wasn't sure how to react to until I continued to keep knocking at, their, knocking at those doors on those appointments that were set. And I just got better and a little bit more free flow with, you know, how to overcome some of those comments. But that comes with practice. Yeah, I, I agree. And I'm watching it uh, now with Kevin. And I get where my deficiencies are in it. I, you know, going to the door and being uh, a wrecking ball bank guy does not uh, get you a whole lot of time in front of uh, somebody who's trying to keep their house. And I get that. I'm wondering climate-wise, um, just so that I, my own perception, I'm on a uh, quest. Are, are the real estate agents of the Arizona area struggling to find listings right now? Is it tough out there in Arizona? Yeah, I think it is. You know, and our inventory is low. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of competition to, to, get, to get listings. I agree. I agree. And... I don't want to make this a commercial for all of you that have already invested in the monster, but I hate to say it, I don't know any other way in the current market with every, the perception of the homeowner and the perception of the real estate agents are the same. They're scared and they don't know what's going to happen with real estate. They just don't. So they're fighting and trying to cling to ideas. Um, and I heard this from Kevin. Uh, he was telling me that he tagged a house a couple of weeks ago. Uh, met with them on Friday, and they listed with somebody else on Monday. Uh, that tells me that there's something broken in what he did on Friday. <laughs> uh, and again, you have to keep getting on that horse. How long was it before you actually started to see a constant flow from the listings, uh, a constant flow of listings from the monster, where it was just, I got a routine, I'm putting up 40 tags this week, and I'm, you know, a general 
I've got an operating platform that you're kind of doing where it's kind of uh, where it's producing listings for you. I would say thirty days. After thirty days, I I had my first listing, and then it just the thing is, is you you know the more you get out there and the more people that you meet, you build that pipeline of follow ups, and you continue to to follow up with these people, and things shake loose along the way. And they and and in the meantime, you're still out there tagging, you're still out there meeting people, you're still out there plugging your pipeline, and you're still working those follow-ups. So, if you just stay in that mode all the time, um, it it starts to things start to shake loose. Yeah, I agree. David, you got anything? That was awesome. Um, no, I I spent some few hours with with. Uh, Marianne and Al the other day, so I, I totaled. That's why I wanted her to get on the mic, though. So, I think it's amazing. Now, your background is in door knocking and cold calling, correct? Before, before the Be before monster, the monster, yes. It was everything I could possibly do. You okay, know, from so door, you from door knocking and mails, mail mailing out things, and you know calling people that I had dealt with before and asking for referrals, blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, it was right. a lot of effort and spent to do that. And I'm going to say this to everybody. Every objection you can give me for not putting up your tags, okay? And I get that I get buyers. Anybody who has an information system like me realizes that there are people who purchase systems <laughs> just to purchase systems. I actually, I'm not going to out any names, but trust me, I had that conversation with somebody I did a one-on-one -on -one with last week. They're, they're a buying unit, as we like to call them in the uh, business. Uh, happens to David, happens to me. They're people who get stuff and don't use stuff. But if you're showing up to these calls, it tells me that either you have a crazy voyeur attitude, or you're listening to this, or you're listening to this replay, you want listings. That, that, that's the bottom line. Now, the reason I bring that up, you understand the point of a pivot. And I've been having this discussion with Kevin, and I'm, I don't think I'm doing a very – I guess I'm doing this uh, recording. <laughs> it's great that there's coaching students here. I'm creating something for Kevin, i got to admit. I, wa I want a perfect Kevin going out there, and I don't want him to be frustrated. How important is it to insert pivots in the conversation – where they understand, um, one, that you're a real estate agent, two, that there are alternatives. Like, you've got, to me, it seems hugely important not to be monotracked, and I can see this happening with the coaching students. I'm an advocate. I'm here to talk about your loan mod. If you don't want to talk about your loan mod, darn, I didn't get the listing. Well, you're only talking about one thing, and we all know what they're going to say at the front door. Um, as somebody who's done the cold calling and the door knocking route, you understand the points of the pivot of, hey, do you or somebody you know, or how important are inserting those pivots and inserting that you are an agent and that that is an alternative? Well, you know, it's... Uh, I sound like Tom Ferry now, don't I? You've got to insert well, pivot. You know, all I can tell you is, as far as asking for referrals and stuff like that after I've talked to them, blah, 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 or helped them, or maybe sold something, I always ask for referrals there then. And I also ask for a letter or an email of recommendation. And I keep those, and I usually have a couple of pages of recommendations in my, my uh, package when I leave it with them so that they know that I'm actively advocating for homeowners and this, these are some of the people that I've helped and they were nice enough to write something. Um, the, I'm not quite sure what your question is about. My question is when you're um, having your dialogue with the homeowner, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you're not monotracked on the let's talk about your loan mod, let's talk about your loan mod, let's talk about your loan mod. I'm an advocate, let's talk about your loan mod okay, great, can I follow up with you about the loan mod? At some point, there has to be a discussion of you as being one of the alternatives to the foreclosure, listing that property. I, well, I, I think it's got to, I don't know, I don't know how important it is. Um, you and David have both a very eloquent, eloquent way of inserting that, but 
I think it's crucial. I don't, you know, I think if you're there for one specific thing only, I don't know. I think you're limiting your chances of getting the listing out of at the end of the day, without sounding crass, this is about getting a listing. Yeah. But you know what? I, I don't even think about that when I initially meet with them. I don't think about the listing. I think about helping, you know, what is it, what's going on with you and, you know, as far as zoning in on the loan mod, sometimes that's not always appropriate. You know, you might ask them, have you ever applied for a loan mod before? And so a lot of these people got a loan mod two years ago and they're still struggling. And they're trying to go back in and apply for another one. Or, um, or you know, I ask them, I say, you know, what, what actually caused your hardship, you know, before? And has that hardship been resolved? Are you back on track, you know, you know, a lot of times they'll share that they were out of work and now they are working again. And I always ask them things like, you know, and this is just a free flow conversation with them. It's, and what I always ask them, uh, you know, especially let's say, for instance, they say, oh, we're going to reinstate. And I ask them, do you know how much your reinstatement amount right. is? You know, has has you know? Because sometimes they don't even know. Right. I'm gonna cure. And, I'm gonna cure all fifteen thousand dollars of what I owe them. Wow. Right. And they don't, they also don't realize that there's legal and late fees that are tagged on top of that. Right. So that number can be a real runaway train for them. And I ask them, I say, okay, you know, if they know what their loan amount is or their arrearage is on their mortgage to reinstate, then I ask them, are you prepared to start making your, your mortgage payments again? And what are those? What's your mortgage pay payment? I, I ask them to tell me, and it's not that I'm being nosy, but I want them to tell me so that it drills into them, okay, this is what I'm on the hook for once I reinstate the loan. My $1,500 a month or $1,800 a month payment is going to kick back in. And I point blank ask them, do you think that's going to work for you? Or is it going to continue to be a hardship and a stretch for you? I just ask them. It's pretty reasonable. Uh, there are questions. Question number one from uh, Blyson. Are, are you doing any other forms of marketing or are you just monstering for all of your listings? I'm just monstering. It, it's been so successful for us, and I have more more work, more follow-ups, more everything than I can handle now. And it's just Al and I. Um, so it's it's we're busy. So well, let's well, talk with that. What's your batch and drop on Monster? How many batches are you putting out per week consistently? Consistently, Monday, Tuesday, eighteen tags per day. <laughs> pretty straightforward and you're and still, now, let me let, let 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 me just kind of elaborate on this so when we when we when we chatted last week um, Al made something really very clear and and what he made clear is that they have not missed a week in a really 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 long time I mean in weekend week out some weeks are better than other weeks right. and they're consistent and their capital you know, and I happen to know these guys do four or five of these, you know, listings a month, you know, because I'm getting their short sales, and the, and, and I also, and I, and I also know that they're benefiting today from tags that they dropped uh, months and months ago, even a year ago. Is that that's, right, Marianne? That's correct. I mean, there's some, there's some that I've followed up with for over a year. And we, we get to be real good friends. <laughs> so, you know, even if it doesn't work out, I have made such an impression with these people because I follow up. I'm tenacious. I'm, I'm a professional. And they know that by, how, by my actions and how responsible I am in staying in touch. And because of that, whether, whether something happens between us or not is another thing. But my phone rings all the time for people that I have had experiences like that with. And they send, they send their friends, relatives to me. And I always drill on to them that, you know, that um, this is, this is a, a small portion of what I do, and that's advocating for homeowners. My traditional business is my real estate, is my buyer and seller traditional real estate. 
but this is just one section of what I do in my business.